Hello, welcome uh, to Web Technologies uh, class. I kept uh, all the material in uh, my blog. It is uh, uh, michaelkona.blogspot.com. Over there, if you go to second image, you can find uh, some material for uh, second image. In that, I have explained about the first material. What I have kept in this. Okay, if you click on this, one uh, PDF will come. Actually, it is a PPT. Okay, I explained this in the last uh, uh, video. Now I'm going to explain uh, about the other material what I have kept in uh, uh, my blog. So if you click on that, it will be open in a new tab like this. This is about DTD. What is DTD? Document type definition. Document type definition. What is the use of document type de uh, definition? Here we will tell how an XML document should be. How an XML document should be. Okay. So we will define in DTD and that will be applied in the definition while writing the XML file, while writing the XML file, okay? So here, uh, uh, so many syntaxes are given. You have to look into those syntaxes first. The first one is, there is internal DTD as well as uh, external DTD. External DTD as well as internal DTD. Internal DTD in the sense, DTD, the definition, and the XML document, both are present in the same file. In the same file. External DTD means, okay, um, this is the X, uh, definition for the XML file. This is the definition for XML file, okay? And this DTD is used in the XML file. This is another file. These are two different files. These are two different files. Okay. The upper one is XML file and the bottom one is DTD file. Okay. But suppose the name of this file is node.dt. Node.dt. Okay. So we will be specifying that node.dtd while writing the XML file by using a special tag called doc type. Okay. Doc type is uh, specifying uh, about this XML file, there's nothing but it is telling node is the root node, node is the root node. And the second one is uh, this particular thing is present in the local computer, that's why you represent that one in the system. Okay, sometimes uh, they will perform some operations in network also. For that, you have to mention whether it is local or in network. So, if you write system, it tells it is local. Okay, these points are we discussed already in the previous uh, class, okay, previous uh, uh, document. And node.dtd, what is node.dtd? This is the definition of the XML file. According to the definition provided in node.dtd, we have to define the present XML. Earlier, we used to write only this one, the processing instruction, as then question mark XML version. Uh, that's it. Afterwards, we, we used to write the uh, the XML content. But here, one more new thing has added that is nothing but document. That is nothing but document. Okay. So, that is what this point, and we have seen that in the last class. If I want to explain once again, see this one element is telling that should be a tag in XML file with the note. There should be another tag in XML file with the name too. Similarly, from similarly heading. Similarly, body. These are all the tags that are to be maintained in XML document. Okay. And for node tag, to, from, heading, body, all are children. Okay. So if you look at the XML document, okay. So node is the root node. Node is the root node. And in the middle of node opening and node closing, node opening is this one. And node closing is this one. Okay, now in the middle of the, uh, that node, they are placing to, from, 
heading body. What are those? These are all children. These are all children. But okay, so this is sufficient. As an easy student, uh, if you know this much, it is sufficient. Um, but if you have any interest, if you think there might be a question in the remaining things also, then you can further enter into this document. So that's nothing but how each and every element uh, in a DTD are declared. So as I explained, element is a tag to declare or define an tag or an element uh, in the XML document. So the name of the element and the element content. Okay. So if there are no children, then we will write the data type. Otherwise, we have to specify the children, children tag names. Uh, there can be empty tags also. That's what uh, for empty we have to write capital letters. And elements with the data, there can be C data, there can be, this, this is nothing but like, like data type, like data type, okay? Uh, PC data as well as any, they are explaining that one, C data, um, character data, PC data, okay? Um, um, if you see C data, uh, it will not be parsed by the parser. If you take P, uh, PC data, it will be parsed by the parser. Okay, uh, any re uh, refers to anything, that is sufficient, okay? And uh, with the children, element with the children. So the name of the element, afterwards, you are supposed to write all the child names. Okay, so that is what, child one, child two, child three, child four, so on up to child n. Okay, so, and you can go for wrapping and all those things. I think that particular uh, point is sufficient, how you will be uh, uh, defining an element, how its children has to be mentioned, what is PC data, what is C data, what is the negative submission. And uh, next one is about occurrence, how many times it has to occur. Okay, uh, we can write plus, uh, if you write plus, minimum one occurrence. Uh, you can write after the child name, you can write uh, asterisk, that has about zero or many, asterisk, zero or many aspect okay uh question mark zero or one zero or one either uh, uh, if you are not giving ch a child uh, a name as uh, uh, children no problem if you give also no problem but if you are giving only one child, like that zero or one aspect. okay and uh, like that so many other things are there you can uh, go through all these things okay another one is uh, attributes I can tell like this, you can skip this feature content out and all the stuff. Uh, don't worry about that. Okay. And another point is attributes. This is what I'm telling about only the important concepts, only the important concepts. So another one is attributes. So whenever you write a tag, there will be name of the tag, there will be children or content of the tag. Along with that, there will be attributes for the tag. Okay. So you have to use element tag for defining an XML node or XML tag. Similarly, we have to use at list, A-T-T-L-I-S-T tag in order to define the attributes of an XML tag, okay? So we are giving the attribute list for what? For the element, the name of the element that you are supposed to write. And what is the well, uh, name of the attribute and uh, type of the attribute? And if you want any default value, Initial value, or if the value is not specified, then this value can be applied. So these are uh, this is about attribute. Okay. So for suppose. Okay. So if you look at uh, this example, square is the element. For square, the attributes are the attribute only one attribute is present here. Yeah, the attribute is width. Okay. And uh, its value is Okay, so that's what. See, that is an element definition. Element name is square. Okay, and uh, it can be empty. And that is nothing but in the middle of uh, opening and closing of square, there is nothing, no data, so empty. And uh, that, there is uh, uh, an attribute for element, a uh, square. So we are writing at list attribute list. Attribute list is not only one attribute you can mention any number of attributes. So, and the at list, we are uh, specifying for which uh, tag we are specifying the attribute, there's nothing but square, this one. And uh, what is the name of the attribute? Width is the attribute, so we are writing here, while uh, writing the XML document, we'll write width, 
what is with attribute for the square with this attribute for square tag okay is equals to some c data anything any data okay c data okay for suppose uh, they have any uh, they have assigned 100 okay for suppose if you are not uh, assigning a value then by default uh, it will take zero because it is, uh, it is related to okay so this uh, stuff is sufficient okay no need to again uh, dig into all the um, advanced topics if you have interest you can go through uh, advanced topics okay um, okay i think uh, up to that point it is sufficient and of course uh, there are a few things uh, uh, we have a table here in fact so you can give default value you can give that value is required Otherwise, that value is implied. Implied means attribute does not have to be included. If you want to include, if it is mandatory, make it required. Um, it is optional, go for implied. Uh, if the value is not specified, then you want to specify some value, then default. And uh, if you want to fix to one particular value, then fix. And you have to specify what is that value. You have to specify the value. If what is the default value? You are telling there is a default value. What is the default value? We are supposed to write. We wrote uh, uh, here in this example default value is suppose zero, okay, and uh, fixed value, fixed value. So those are the things uh, related to attributes, okay. So these things and all no need to worry about. You can uh, ignore this one, okay. So that is about uh, DTD. That is about uh, DTD document in my blog. And then, uh, uh, see, similar to DTD, there is one more concept called XML schema. XML schema. Okay. XML schema will do the same job of DTD. Okay. It is used to define how an X, uh, XML document is supposed to be. How an XML document is supposed to be. Okay. So, that is what. A schema is a general term. Um, I think uh, no need to go through all these things and understand it a more. Let us concentrate on how we will uh, writing the XML schema. Just remember, XML schema is uh, the different, uh, just like DGD, uh, which tells about how an XML uh, document should be. Okay. So similar to DTD. Okay. Uh, in the DTD, we were we were writing, writing like this, and then XML version, uh, the doc type, and the root element name, system, and the URL of the uh, DTD. It means what? When you are applying, when you are applying a DTD to an XML document, we wrote like this. And similarly, in XML schema also, we will be writing like this. Okay. Where we will be writing? We will be writing within the root. We will be writing within the root. Okay. And uh, uh, within the root element as an attribute, we will be writing this one. XML, LNS, colon, XSI. This is the standard which we are supposed to follow. Okay. What is XSI? XML schema instance. Okay. Uh, XML, LNS is the namespace. Okay. So XML, LNS. Uh, call an exercise equals to uh, uh, there is a path uh, in internet for this uh, XML uh, schema related standards. We have to refer that one. Um, that's why we are uh, referring that one. HTTP call an slash slash www dot that part. Okay. And then we are specifying that. Then uh, similar to this one. See, in uh, DTD, we used to write where the DTD, DTD file is there, that URL you will be specifying over here in the XML document. Similarly, in the XML document root element, we will be providing uh, 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 the reference uh, for uh, XML schema instance, uh, as well as we are providing the URL of the uh, of the XML schema, and that XML schema file extension is XS. Okay. So, that is what XML schema definition. X, XML, S, schema, D, definition. Okay. So, similar to uh, DTD, we are going to uh, define how an XML document is supposed to be 
in a uh, separate file with the extension .xsd. In order to apply that uh, XSD into our one of our XML document while defining the XML document, you have to specify the reference of that XSI XML schema instance, and uh, you are supposed to specify the name of the file uh, in which uh, that XML schema definition is uh, uh, found. Okay, so this is about to look. And that only they are explaining over here. Okay. And uh, now, when we come to access deep document, the talking about XML schema definition document, first one, there should be extension dot XSD. And here in the definition, in the definition, not in the XML document, in the definition, there should be a root element with the name uh, schema. Okay. And uh, uh, at the starting, you are supposed to write these tags that nothing but you have to write the um xml processing instruction that nothing but uh, it will tell about um, what is this document this, this document is related to xml they will tell that point and the second one is they, they will tell this is uh, this document is related to xml and that to xml schema to uh, represent this is uh, belong this document belongs to xml schema we are supposed to write one more tag or here that's nothing but access that namespace colon schema this is the standard which we have to follow and we have to get the reference again. You have to get the reference. Okay. And you have to write the data group. That's nothing but XML, NS, column, access is equals to WD.org 2001 XML schema. For there, uh, they provided a standard about how an XML document should be uh, created. So we have to give a reference to that particular document, which is present in uh, online in internet. Okay. And uh, this is necessary to specify where all excessive tags are defined. If all the XML schema definition related tags are present uh, in the internet in this location. So we are referring it. That's why we have to uh, reference it in our XML schema document. Okay. And uh, okay. Now, see, we have seen how the uh, XML document should be defined in order to follow XML schema. And afterwards, we have seen how uh, uh, the starting two tags of an XML schema uh, should be uh, written, otherwise it should be used. Okay, then we are entering into how to define an XML document uh, in a, an XML schema document. Okay, so here we have a simple element as well as complex element. Simple element means what it is, it contains text. See, I can tell like this, simple element means directly within that uh, XML tag, we will place the data, that's it. no more children. But when we come to complex element, there will be children, there will be children. Okay, let us look at uh, what is simple. So it uh, contains uh, text, there is nothing else. And uh, no attributes, and uh, no other elements as children. And of course it cannot be, because uh, it, 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 it consists of, uh, I mean, no children means uh, uh, there should be some text, there should be some text. There should be some text, then it should not be empty. Then it should not be, it cannot be empty. Complex means it, it should have, uh, it may have attributes. It may be empty, no problem. Uh, or it may contain text or other elements or both text and other elements, however you want. So this is a complex one. Other uh, one is just a simple one. Okay, so we have a simple and complex elements. What are elements? Elements are nothing but the tags what we write in XML. Okay. So there can be a simple tag or a complex tag, simple node or a complex node. Otherwise, simple element or complex element. Anything is same. tag, node, uh, element, all are uh, synonyms. Next one, how to define a simple element? Okay, just like uh, in uh, uh, DTD, we used to write uh, uh, less than uh, exclamation mark uh, um, element less than exclamation mark at list. Those are two, uh, two things uh, we used in DTD. Similarly here also, we will be using uh, the namespace access colon element to define an element, that to a simple element. And uh, uh, there should be name for the element, element in the sense that particular tag or node. So you will be writing less than student. So here we, while uh, defining student tag, in XML file that we want to write a student tag. In order to write a student tag, we have to write this uh, uh, 
uh, in uh, XSD like this, less than XS column elements in space, name is equal to spirit. Type is equal to that particular data type. Here you can directly find the data type like our programming languages. That is the advantage of XML schema. And XML schema uh, looks like a general uh, normal XML document. Whereas when you go for uh, DTD, it will not look like an XML document. It looks some, somewhat different, somewhat different. That's the advantage of XML schema. If you are, uh, uh, if you feel good at XML, then uh, it is very easy for you to use uh, XSD rather than DTD. Okay, that's what uh, people will tell. Okay, so when you look at the type, uh, there, there are different types. Again, uh, with the namespace, you are supposed to write that one, access column, boolean, uh, integer, date, string, decimal, time, okay? And of course, uh, just like, see, this stack, how it is, you see. Okay, this is looking like an XML uh, tag, like XML tag. Okay, so another one is uh, by using attributes, we are specifying the, uh, the features of the XML tag, how the XML tag should be. The, that one we are telling by using uh, attributes. But in uh, DDD, we used to define another tag for address. We used to define another tag for another uh, thing to be applied uh, to one particular XML. But here it is not like that. By using one tag and uh, its attribute concept, we are specifying almost all the features for that particular uh, uh, XML uh, node or element or tag. Okay, so even for default also as a uh, uh, attribute, we can write a default is equals to and uh, the default value. Otherwise, fixed is equals to that particular fixed value. Fixed in the sense, only this value should be assigned. Default in the sense, if the value is not specified, then this value will be used. Okay, similarly, you can uh, uh, define the attribute. But for attribute, you are supposed to write one more tag over here. And again, in terms of at, uh, in terms of attributes for the attribute, you can specify the features of that particular attribute. Again, name of the attribute and type of the attribute. And if you want, again, default, fixed, okay, how to use, whether it is optional or required. Optional in the sense, you want, use. Otherwise, no need. Required in the sense, mandatory. You have to use it like that. Okay, that is about attribute. See, whenever you are taking an XML document, there will be tag name for the tag, XML document and data within the XML document. Along with that uh, uh, tag name and the data of the XML document, there will be attributes. So access call an attribute is used to define how the attribute of an XML tag should be, okay? And here in XML schema, we will be defining everything like a normal XML document type nodes, okay? Similar to those nodes will be right. okay. And from here onwards, the concepts will come. So if you have interest, uh, uh, then uh, go through it, otherwise you can skip them because don't get much confusion before examination, okay? And uh, from EC, they may not expect this much, okay? So the basic concepts are important. How you have to define an XML document structure by using DTD as well as schema, XML schema at the basic level, at the basic level, okay? So uh, yeah, there, there can be some restrictions, uh, minimum this, uh, this should be there, maximum this should be there, and total digit, this, uh, this should be like the fraction digits uh, should be like this. Some restrictions, you can specify the length related to length also, you can specify related to pattern also, you can specify related to white spaces also, all those are uh, restrictions, okay? I think these things and all uh, you can skip, uh, even uh, enumeration also you can skip. Okay, then next one is complex. See here, in XML schema, we should know how to define a simple element as well as a complex. Complex element means, uh, uh, an XML tag, within that XML tag, there will be some other children, other tags as children. Okay, so uh, how to define such kind of uh, complex elements? Okay, again, the same uh, 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 element node only we are using, element tag only we are using, the same thing we are following, but we are specifying in the, uh, we, are, uh, we are writing complex type tag as uh, an asterisk tag for the element tag, okay? Here we will specify uh, that particular uh, complex nature of that uh, uh, tag. Okay, example, if you see, but suppose uh, uh, there, uh, we are defining like this in an XML document, there should be an element, that name should be first. Okay, and uh, it is complex type, and uh, there will be some children for that, and that children has a sequence, and that sequence is like this, 
there should be two elements in a person tag uh, two children per uh, person tag in that uh, two children one child name is first name and second child name is last name see here again see uh, within uh, the person we need uh, uh, first name and last name as children so again those two are two other tags so again we are using access colon element element like how you define a simple uh, tag or simple element similarly we are defining here also because first name is again a simple element last name is again a simple element okay we are specifying we are defining that first name and last name by using the uh, element tag and by specifying its uh, name what what should be the name of the tag and what the type of the particular uh, data type of the particular uh, data okay so likewise and uh, specifically uh, you can define a complex node of an xml document by using the tags in xml schema and if you see sequence what is sequence the order you have to maintain order first first name then last name not following that thing in other otherwise you want but okay. that's it okay uh, if you go through one small example then uh, you can understand all these things okay no need to worry about remind me what is sequence what is uh, all and uh, some referencing all those things you can skip those but main thing is how we should know how to uh, define an xml schema at the minimum basic level how do you define a dtd at the minimum basic level and uh, uh, based on uh, uh, the dtd dtd definition as well as based upon that uh, xml schema definition how you have to how you supposed to write the xml document that thing you should know okay so now here in this uh, another document in my blog there's nothing but examples this is the one this is the one okay in examples okay i have uh, uh, given few examples of course these are from internet i just copied them and pasted over here i think uh, these examples will help you to understand the concept of what we studied that's it okay now um, Uh, we we are defining uh, uh, otherwise we are creating a file for suppose uh, uh, we are creating a file with name cporder dot xsv what is dot xsv it is xml schema okay in xml schema file our uh, in every uh, xml file you are supposed to write xml crossing instruction and its version of course this encoding is optional you want to use it use it otherwise you can ignore it no problem it is a standard again okay, in real time we will be using that one and uh, another one is uh, Uh, we are telling uh, this is an xml schema file by writing this node i access colon schema and uh, by referring uh, uh, that particular url and then uh, the definition starts so there should be an element with the name cporder and what is that element it is a complex file and that has a sequence what is the sequence first order first second ship then the complex type uh, Yeah. So this is another complex. That's something about ship two. Ship two. See here, we are uh, going for root or ship order. In that uh, sub uh, ch children is order person and ship two. Here again, ship two is a complex one, and it has a sequence. That's nothing but the address. Ship two is nothing but address. So in address there will be so many fields: name of the person, address of the person, city of the person, country of the person. Okay. This is one complex. That's nothing but. a uh, ship 2 is one tag in that children tags are child tags are name address city and country okay then the sequence is closed then this complex type is closed this complex uh, means what ship 2 is closed uh, then uh, uh, the element is closed afterwards another element that's nothing but item element where this item it should be under ship 1 okay we are we came out of a ship 2 ship 2 is Ended over here. Ship is ended over here. This is nothing but up to this point. Okay, this is one element. Ship is one element. Then the other element item under ship. Okay, so our uh, XML document should follow this. Of course, uh, there are again uh, some other uh, uh, elements also. Uh, There's nothing but for item. Okay, item itself again uh, one more uh, uh, complex type. It has again children. There's nothing but uh, uh, those are the details about the item. What they are ordering. so the title of the item in a node and quantity of that item price of the item okay then uh, there is an attribute that nothing but uh, order id should be the uh, attribute for this uh, item okay so like twice uh, we define the uh, xml schema okay now this xml schema which one 
ship order dot xsd ship order dot xsd is used in one xml this is that okay so for every xml file the first starting one is uh, uh, this uh, this line the starting first line is uh, uh, processing instruction and then uh, uh, we are writing the root node in xml schema within the root node you will be specifying which xsd is followed in the definition of this xml file so in the root node root order is ship order okay in that uh, we are specifying uh, ship order dot xsd is the xml schema and of course in order to uh, tell uh, this is an xml uh, instance schema instance uh, we have to write uh, another attribute uh, this is a this is the standard everywhere we have to write the same thing while uh, using the xml schema in your xml document okay and for ship order there should be an attribute okay uh, okay i think uh, this attribute uh, is uh, not belonging to item this attribute belongs to we have to see that the nesting how the nesting is there so based upon that uh, that uh, attribute belongs to ship order that's why within the ship order order id is used okay and then uh, uh, see this is the root node now within the root node order person name of the person then ship to uh, see order person is a simple and uh, ship to is complex so within the name address city country so address has, uh, is done then uh, one more um, uh, uh, html load item uh, this is a complex type within that the title of the item note of the item quantity and as well as price uh, not only one item okay you can write a uh, multiple item so this is one item and this is item okay so like uh, see so one order with two items one order so like this is the example for, i think uh, you can understand by looking at this um, that is about xml uh, schema and uh, there is one more example also you can go through that one uh, right now i am not uh, looking into it so the first one is sufficient that uh, uh, don't uh, um, uh, read much if you read much then uh, you get confusion that's why the basic stuff is sufficient and i don't want to confuse you that's why i have given one small example for xml scheme i think uh, this will help you okay the first two files are sufficient but not the last one okay then uh, Uh, there, there is an XML. Uh, there is an uh, example program for XML. Okay, so plain uh, first one is plain XML document. Okay, they are generally uh, in uh, examination they will ask you to write an XML document. This is important. This is important. Okay, again I am telling this is important. They will ask you to write a uh, uh, create uh, write a program. Uh, uh, otherwise, uh, create an XML document. you have to create an xml document like they will tell you have to maintain catalog as root node and uh, uh, there will be multiple cds within that and uh, for each cd there will be title artist country company price and year okay use all these things and uh, write one xml document there. okay so you have to write that you have to write that program okay it is very simple if you know the concept if you don't know the concept then it will be very difficult so for sure at least 50% they may ask this question in our examination that is nothing but uh, write an xml document with these details okay they will provide the details and they, you have you are supposed to write the program and explain the program that's it you will get the full marks okay maximum score you can get right now when you look at this okay the first uh, line is the first processing instruction for every xml document you are supposed to write this one and the second one is the root node okay so in the root node uh there will be children and uh, there there will be possibility of one child occurring so many times that is what we have seen occurrences also we have uh, defined that one by using question mark uh, asterisk as well as plus okay so cd um uh, it can see it is a catalog otherwise it is a menu uh otherwise it is a list of cds okay and each cd has its own name. so the for each cd we are writing a pair of cd tags okay so one pair of cd tags will give the information about one album or suppose okay in e for one album there will be information like this title artist the country the company price as well as year so these uh, for suppose when you talk in terms of real time so this xml document they will take and from this xml document 
they will get the information about each CD and that will be displayed in the web page. Okay, for suppose Amazon. In Amazon, you see the title of the product, that uh, the author, otherwise the manufacturer of the product, uh, otherwise the company of the product, as well as price, all those things. Some details will be there for each and every product. And those details, they will be, up, they may obtain, they may obtain like this, okay? So when you are writing uh, an XML document, uh, don't write only details about one CD. For suppose they, they may ask, uh, uh, create an XML document for student uh, with roll number, name, and uh, marks okay if you write only related to one student it, it, will, it won't be good you have to write for at least five or six students okay here so many cities okay 10 more than 10 cities okay like the 10 xml document uh, will be in general okay so that is about example for xml document okay please look at that everybody there is 50 percent chance of getting a question uh, like uh, create an XML file uh, with these details. Okay, then uh, there is an uh, example uh, uh, AccessLT. This is also what we have discussed earlier in the last class. Again, this is an XML document, so the processing instruction is same. And second one is this is an AccessLT file, XML style sheet. Okay, uh, so those details we have mentioned. Okay, to tell this is an XML style sheet. We studied that one already. Then we create a template. That's nothing but an XML document. If you want to convert into a HTML document, otherwise you want to display that one in terms of a HTML, in terms of some other format. So uh, to create that one, we have to go for a template. So at the beginning, it will be XML com, uh, call and template. And when there is a uh, root node, slash means root node, then it will create, uh, it will write the code HTML body, HS2 table, uh, table, PR. This is the heading. This is the heading. Okay. So up to that point, it is fine. Then uh, for each uh, XML uh, node uh, in the XML document, uh, if that uh, node is uh, like uh, the node path, see, uh, XML document will be in the form of a tree. There will be root node, chain node, further chain, uh, further chain node, there will be another chain. Like that, a big hierarchy will be there. It, there will be a path from the root node to the chain node. Okay, that path will be like this. Okay, catalog is a root node. Slash CD is the chain, chain node for that. Slash artist is another node. So if you want to go to artist, you have to go through that path. Okay, you have to go through that path. So we are looking for a path uh, catalog slash CD. Whenever catalog slash CD occurs, then we are fetching the data. Otherwise, we are fetching the value of uh, the tags, title, and artist. There are uh, around five uh, tags, uh, children uh, tags uh, for uh, CD, but we are not uh, interested in all those things. We are only getting the title as well as artist of the particular CD. And uh, if you observe carefully, the value what we obtain from the XML document is placed in the TD. TD means ta table data. There's nothing but one cell in a table. So when we execute this program, a table will be generated. A table will be generated. Okay. So uh, this XML, see, we cannot execute this one. This uh, style shape should be used in one XML file. Should be used in one XML file. Okay. Uh, so this is that uh, program. So this is see. Previously we have seen. Uh, uh, okay. Let, let us. Let, this is uh, the plain XML file. If I download this. Okay, it is downloaded. Okay, I'm going to uh, that folder. Okay, here is the one CD catalog. I have to one plain. Uh, uh, no style sheet is applied for this XML document. I will uh, try to open this one in a uh, uh, web browser uh, like uh, a web browser. Okay, let us open in Opera. Okay, so Opera is also one web browser. See how how the table is displayed. Here it is. It's opening some other update related tab. Okay, now see here. This is the tree structure. Okay, this is the root node. So this is one CD. You can collapse. Otherwise, you can uh, expand those nodes. See, this browser is displaying the XML document like this. And one more thing is we cannot execute uh, XML document. We cannot execute XML document. It is only... To, is uh, used only to 
uh, describe the data, the only for description purpose. Okay. So this XML document will be used by uh, uh, some uh, programs, application programs in uh, JSP, in uh, Servlet, otherwise in HTML. Uh, like that, we will in those uh, programs we will be using this XML document. That's why that, that's it. We cannot execute the, uh, an XML document. See, this is the tree. So catalog is the tree. It is collapsed. If I expand that one, okay, these are all uh, uh, the children in the catalog. If I expand one uh, children, these are all children for uh, the child of catalog. Okay, so one uh, node can act as the child as well as parent. CD is child for catalog. CD is parent for title. It is like that. It is a tree structure. Okay. So when I want to look at this uh, XML document, it is showing like this in the web browser. Okay. So I do one thing that nothing but I will go for another program. Okay. Same catalog and CD only. Catalog and CD only. But here we are applying a style sheet. We are applying a style sheet. And uh, the name of the style sheet is namespace under, underscore XML dot XML. So I'm downloading this. It is downloaded uh, in that uh, particular folder. Okay. I will try to open with uh, Opera. Okay. Now here uh, it will uh, show an error, otherwise it won't be executed because uh, in that uh, file, what we did is we are using we are using an XML file. Yeah, this is an XML file. This XML file you are trying to view in a browser, but uh, that is not visible because in order to view that one, they require an XML file. It is not downloaded. So I will download now that XML file. This is what namespace uh, dot xml uh, underscore xml dot xsl is the uh, uh, name of that particular program here how that xml document should be viewed that uh, template is given in this that style is given in this i'm downloading that one okay so i'll, I'll go there now what i will do is cd catalog xml file this is an xml file okay but uh, xsl is applied in this Okay, I'll try to open this one by using any browser. But suppose in this computer I have Opera, so I'm executing. Okay, sometimes this XML documents they will not uh, uh, execute uh, properly in all the browsers. We have to find out the browser where uh, this uh, uh, document ex uh, works properly. Yeah, here it is. Okay. In Opera, it was not uh, executing prop, uh, view, viewed properly, but here it is. See, we are able to see a table. How you got a table when you are trying to view an XML file? That's nothing but XML uh, file is using a style sheet. So that style sheet related uh, template is uh, used over here in order to uh, get the data from the XML document. In the, in the XML document, uh, um, there is, uh, yeah, in Opera, we have that program. There is a catalog, CD, title, artist, country, company, price, so many other. But in uh, XSL, what we use is we just uh, try to obtain only um, uh, title as well as artist. That's why only title and artist is displayed. Okay. You can use some CSS also in order to create this uh, table in an, uh, uh, a more attractive manner. Okay, I, I think uh, you might have understood uh, what is the use of uh, XSL, XML style sheet. Okay, so uh, let's uh, go back to my blog. Okay, that is about the uh, see here. Uh, these are all programs. Here is a plain XML uh, uh, program and uh, uh, the template, uh, uh, style sheet template uh, by using XSLT or uh, XML style sheet. And uh, this is an XML file, the same XML file, but here we wrote one uh, tag which applies uh, the above uh, XSL style uh, uh, into this uh, XML file. Okay, so the output also I have given here because uh, some of you may not know how to execute the program. So this is the output. This is how the output of the particular program looks like. Okay, so those are the details about uh, uh, our XML file. So in uh, uh, in XML, the important points are what is this XML? Okay, what is GTD? What is XML schema? What is style sheet? How to apply style sheet? And uh, what is uh, CSS and how to apply CSS? You can apply CSS like uh, a normal HTML uh, also in uh, XML. 
otherwise you can specify a template okay yeah, in that template you can specify how our excel how our xml document should be viewed in a browser okay so those are the points and the last topic in xml is parsers this is one of the advanced topic and uh, 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 this is not that much important and uh, most of the times 90% they may not ask this question but 10% uh, chance is there that's why let us look at this uh, parser. But uh, before that, I can give one small uh, idea about this uh, concept that nothing but this parser is a program. Otherwise, this parser is used, uh, this parser related code is used in our programming language like the Java, uh, otherwise JavaScript. When you are writing a JavaScript code, uh, if you want to access an XML document in your JavaScript code or in uh, your Java, Java code, what we have to do is we have to make use of this process. Okay. So it will, uh, uh, this parser will take that XML document and uh, it will fetch the things, uh, it will do the things, whatever you want uh, uh, with that uh, XML document. Okay, it do so many things. Let us see that one. What is this XML parser? This is software library or is it, or it is a package. It provides some methods. That nothing but it provides an interface uh, that a programming language can interact with the XML document. Okay, so manually we will not read the XML document. We will read the XML document by using a program. In that program, we can make use of the parser. Okay. And it checks the well formedness of the XML document. It will check the validness of the XML document. Okay. And uh, that's what XML, you, you better draw this diagram whenever uh, they ask about XML parser, irrespective of the question, uh, because this does the concept of nothing but XML document will be given to the XML parser. XML parser has APIs. APIs means already some built-in code is available. They will use that built-in code and uh, they will parse this XML document and they will give that the parsed XML document to the client application, which is written in Java or any other programming language. That's the thing. That's it. Okay. So here, so many parsers are there in our syllabus. We have only two par parsers. One is DOM parser and one is Saxons. Okay. So let us look at those points. XML parsing. Okay, now some uh, explanation about uh, what is this parser, what is this uh, XML parser. Process of reading an XML document. When we will read in a program, in a program, a program has to read the XML document. That can be done by using parser. And uh, it provides an interface to the user application for accessing the document. Okay, it provides an interface. Uh, API is available. So here it is. API is available. In that API, there is already some built-in code. You can use that code in order to read the XML code. That's what the interface. Okay, and uh, they will check uh, the well formedness and they will check whether it is valid or not. Okay, no? a valid is nothing but by using BTT as well as XML. It has to, uh, if an XML document uh, um, is valid, means it has followed either BTT or XML. If, you are, if it is not following, either DDD or XML schema, then it is not a valid XML document. And well-formedness also, we have seen that nothing but all the tags should be proper, um, attributes should be within course, there should not be any nesting, and it is case sensitive, it has to be opened as well as closed within the by using the same case, like that there will be some rules, and uh, if those rules are followed, then it is well -formed. And uh, a valid document, first it should be well-formed, then it has to follow either DDD or XML schema. Okay. And um, okay, so what is the importance of the parser? That's nothing but this uh, third point. Through the parsing interface, the user application can focus on the application logic itself without dwelling on the tedious details of XML. No need to think much about XML, how that XML document is, how complex that XML document is. No need to bother about that. Simply uh, deal with the XML document just like a normal program, normal application logic. Okay. So there are uh, uh, so many things are there, but uh, two important things are uh, DOM, document object model related to parser, as well as such. So as a simple a API X XML, simple API but XML. Okay. So uh, we are looking simply just uh, uh, the differences between DOM and such. Of course, for CSC and IT students, uh, I used to explain programs also. But uh, if I start explaining that program, the, again, the interest about XML uh, uh, will not be with you. That's why just I'm giving the difference between DOM and SACS, that's it. It is sufficient. Okay. So in DOM, they will use a tree-based interface. And uh, 
of what an application will do. It will search for the nodes, it will read the information as well as it will update the content of the nodes. Okay. And uh, so models and XML document also by like a tree with various nodes like elements, attributes, types, comments, and things and so on. In SARS, it is event-driven in Event in the sense, but suppose when the user clicks up on it, it is an action. For that action, you are, you are supposed to another uh, you are supposed to perform another operation. That's nothing but all the fields for the what the user has filled in the uh, form should be uh, kept in the database. Okay, it is event driven. When there when there is an action, you have to perform another action uh, in response to that particular action. Okay, here also same thing. Okay, how this sorts will operate. So an application should register to the parser. You are developing an application, otherwise you are writing a program. That program has to register with the parser and it's where it varies even kind of so in java what you have to do is but suppose if you want to uh, perform an operation and the user clicks up on the button first you have to register for the click event that's nothing but action in, in java similarly here also it is event driven so you have to register for the with the event the parser's uh, event handler so that whenever uh, that particular uh, case occurs then uh, uh, it will tell to us so that we can execute a uh, uh, particular set of uh, Code, okay, set of lines of code. Okay, so as the parser reads an XML document, it generates events for the encounter nodes. So we will register with the event uh, handlers. Whenever uh, that uh, uh, criteria met, then automatically it will uh, generate an event. Otherwise, it will trigger it. Now, based upon the trigger, we can respond in our application program. That is what the event driven interface. The same thing like Java, but here. When it is parsing through the XML document, whenever that particular node occurs, whenever that particular attribute occurs, it will tell to us. When it tells to us within our application program, we can write the code what to be done when that particular thing encounters. That is what the concept of event driven interface. And then, uh, okay, some other concepts. You can remember that point event driven interface, and here it is tree based interface. It will search. Uh, um, uh, for all in a DOM, it will search for all the nodes, it will read the information, it will update all those things, but here it is event driven. Okay, here there will be event handlers. We have to, there will be a method, will be, uh, there will be a method which will be executed whenever the particular event occurs. Okay, and you have to register for that particular, uh, you have to register uh, for that particular uh, 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 event. All those uh, that explanation is given over here. Okay. So the same thing. And then uh, if you see the differences, okay, in DOM, it is random access. In SARS, uh, it is appropriated for uh, local information. Okay. In DOM, it can read as well as modify. You can modify it also, not only reading in DOM, but in SARS, so you can only read that. Okay. Uh, in DOM, it is not uh, memory efficient. There's nothing but uh, if the size increases, it won't be good. But uh, um, this is more memory efficient. Okay. Um, so it will do some uh, manipulations. Otherwise, it will, uh, in terms of memory, it will uh, work properly. Okay. And uh, if the maximum document is very large, okay, DOM cannot do it. But whereas uh, SACS, okay, it can handle very large documents also. Some small uh, differences between DOM and such. Okay, so this is convenient for complex and random access and is appropriate for streaming applications. Streaming in the sense, but suppose in uh, uh, internet, uh, if you are watching a video, then nothing but video is streamed from server to your machine. Okay, for such kind of applications, when you want to parse, uh, such is good. Okay, and uh, this is for random access. Random in the sense, um, at the starting of the file, we have to check for something afterwards in the middle of the file. We have to check something afterwards. At the end of the file, we will check something. Like the random, it will not be in a sequence. It will not be in a sequence, DOM. Okay. And uh, so in DOM, uh, they will create a tree structure. So we have to wait until the, uh, until the tree is created. Okay. But in SACS, it is not like that. At the beginning itself, we can start. At the beginning of the uh, content itself, uh, we can start parsing. Okay. And uh, recently, there have been newly proposed XML programming interfaces, not only DOM and such, there are so many other also. That is full-based parsing as well as data binding. 
okay in full page parsing the example is tax in data binding example is jxb java architecture for xml binding streaming api these are all advanced concepts okay so the main point in uh, parser is nothing but parser is used to uh, read the xml document within our application program okay here we see two types of uh, uh, parsers when it's dom and such not only dom and such so many are there but suppose uh, uh, stacks and uh, jxb okay so stacks is for streaming and uh, jxb is, is for uh, uh, java architecture for xml binding okay in dom we will be using a tree based interface and stacks we will be using an event driven interface in dom you can uh, search you can read you can update also whereas in stacks uh, it is event driven so it has to be Uh, it has to register for uh, the application program has to register for uh, an event in the XML document, uh, and whenever uh, that particular uh, uh, event occurs, uh, it triggers. After the triggering, you can execute one method in your program, uh, which will perform the operations. What you want to perform whenever that particular uh, uh, sequence occurs, whenever that particular element uh, occurs, are found. Okay, and there are a few differences uh, like the one in random access and other one is local. Monthly history, and it will take time. One is used for complex, another one is for streaming. Like there are some differences are. So this is theory about uh, our parsers. I think uh, uh, this is sufficient for you. Uh, if you dig into program, there will be so many things. Uh, um, yeah, so many things will come complicated things will come. That much is not necessary according to my knowledge for you. Okay. So with this, uh, I'm completing uh, XML related uh, explanation. in the next video i will do uh, java beans i will give information about uh, java beans okay thank you for now